A fracture at the heart of French far-right politics. Marine Le Pen tells party members they're free to leave after bitter personal rivalries burst back into the open. Could it give momentum to an even more radical candidate ahead of elections? This is Inside Story. Hello and welcome to the program. I'm Deri Nabugeda in Doha. Party defections and family infighting are threatening one of the most recognizable faces in French far-right politics. Marine Le Pen has told supporters to quit now if they want after two EU parliament politicians left the national rally movement. And now her niece, who's popular among right-wingers, says Le Pen's rival Eric Zamour would make a better presidential candidate. Le Pen and Zamour are battling it out to face the current president, Emmanuel Macron, who's expected to run again in April's election. I think once again we can switch sides, but it should be done now because we have 70 days remaining before a major event for the future of France. And having people who pretend to be here while their heart is elsewhere is unbearable. It is a total lack of dignity and respect towards all our supporters who are fighting with all their conviction, with heart, with courage, but also towards all our voters to whom we should have an attitude of loyalty. Well, family feuds are nothing new in the Le Pen dynasty. Marine has clashed with her father, Jean-Marie, since 2011, when she took control of what was then called the National Front. Four years later, she threw him out of the party he co-founded after he repeated false and inflammatory comments about the Holocaust. In 2017, Marine Le Pen was decisively beaten by Emmanuel Macron in the runoff presidential vote. And since then, hardliners in her party believe she's drifted too far towards the mainstream and they prefer Eric Zamour. This month, he was fined more than $11,000 for hate speech over remarks he made about young migrants. Let's now bring in our guest. Joining us from Paris is Nasira Ganif, who's a sociologist and professor at the University of Paris 8. In Brussels, Peter Kleppe, editor of Brussels Report. EU and from St. Malo in northwestern France, we have Jacques Roland, who's a senior research fellow at the Global Policy Institute. Welcome to um, Inside Story. Thanks so much for joining us. Jacques Roland, uh, how big a political blow is it for Marie Le Pen when her niece, uh, Marion, says that the far right rival, Eric Zamour, is a better candidate, uh, describing her aunt as lacking logic and vision? <laughs> Yeah, it's a big blow to Marine Le Pen, uh, definitely, because it shows that uh, many people think that Marine Le Pen has no chance of winning this election. And because it's the first, third time she's been a candidate, that she has no future. And uh, already we can see that uh, some of the senior members, not many at the moment, but many are thinking, not, not many have declared themselves, are moving towards Zemmour, who think is a better prospect for the future. Because many people on the far right have integrated the fact that they will not win this election and that Macron is probably going to win it. And that after that, it's time that it will, be, it will uh, need to a total recomposition of the political landscape after that. And they want to position themselves in order to create a big far-right party, including members of the Front National and the Reconquest movement of uh, Eric Zemmour. And you can think even that they can see at their next potential leader, at their next candidate in 2027, right. uh, that they're thinking of Marion Maréchal Le Pen. Is, she's kind of already started. We can feel that the plates are moving and that uh, they're thinking more. They think the game is up for this election okay. and they're thinking more of what after. OK, uh, let's uh, put some of these thoughts to uh, Peter over in Brussels. So do you agree that Le Pen is losing some of her voter base to other candidates like uh, Zamour? I mean, the latest polling that I've seen, at least, is that uh, Zamour is polling right now at 11 and a half percent. Uh, well, absolutely. And uh, he has been polling uh, higher before. Uh, the thing is, he still has not officially uh, declared. He still needs to secure the support of uh, 500 mayors, the signatures, um, actually. 
uh, and that's still taken a bit. He's confident he will get them. Uh, I'm not sure how certain that is, but that's an important uh, factor. Now, uh, I think the big difference between Le Pen and Zemmour is um, mostly actually on the economics. Uh, Le Pen has managed to convince the old um, left-wing electorate, for example, in the uh, what, what they call the Rust Belt in the north of France, in uh, Roubaix, for example, uh, whereas Zemmour is uh, somebody who's more popular uh, among uh, the centre-right, um, who, whose uh, economic discourse is more in favour of free market policies. Not always. He can be protectionist as well. He's French, uh, after all. Uh, but I think that's a big difference. And, and that's also the reason why some people believe that he has a better chance than, uh, than Le Pen, because uh, they think he's able to also reach out to some uh, centre-right voters. So if it would be a runoff to Macron, I don't think he's completely uh, without a chance, actually, because of that. OK. Uh, Nasira, over to you. I mean, this infighting within uh, Marine Le Pen's party is, is nothing really new, as we've been saying. But how does it impact her chances in the upcoming election? Well, first of all, I would like to maybe refrain the conversation we are having. We are not so much talking about, you know, the business as usual about, about uh, elections in France. We are speaking of the overcome of fascism in France, which is, which is, the, which much, is much more... You're absolutely right, and that is, that is what we are going to get into. But first, I just wanted to get your take on how this impacts the election. So I think that uh, it doesn't really impact. What it impacts is the future of uh, Marion Maréchal Le Pen. I think she's already playing the next game, which is 2027, as in uh, this is what I told to your journalist when we spoke. And uh, because of that, she knows that she'd better play the Zemmour card than her own card, because her own doesn't have much of a chance to, to get to the second round. OK, and now on to your important point that you raised, and that is the rise of far uh, right parties in France, uh, Nasira. Um, how strong mm -hmm. is, in France, is the right wing political movement? I think it has always been. And uh, it's about time that we stop calling them extreme right or far right. It's a fascism that never really disappeared from the French uh, political scene. It was there. As, as strong as it was since the, the end of the 19th century. It had come back through uh, the Le Pen father, uh, Jean-Marie Le Pen. And interestingly, since the 1984, since he started to win elections, there was this way of euphemizing his position, his presence, by not mentioning that his, this has to do with the long history of fascism in France. So what's so concerning right now is the fact that this has become completely accepted, completely accommodated in the, in the French political spectrum, and nobody really wants to measure and to weigh the real influence and the real danger that this uh, entails for the French society in the decades to come. Jacques Roland, a third of the electorate are saying that they are planning to vote for a far-right candidate. How do you explain the rise of the far-right and uh, what do you put it down to? But it's been coming for quite a while, as uh, Nasira said. So and, why has it made uh, such a comeback now? The, last, the comeback is, has, has been there already, even before that. Uh, you had a far right, let's say, uh, nearly uh, with Marine Le Pen at uh, close to 20 percent. And but within the Republicans, there was a very strong, uh, strong brand also who have three obsessions, you know, insecurity, immigration and Islam. This trend has been present in the uh, government right among the Republicans, uh, highlighted by someone like Eric Ciotti, who came second in the vote to, desire, uh, to choose the candidate behind uh, behind uh, Valérie Pécresse. So this hard right brand close to the far right, to the National Front has been there for many years. The, don't forget that uh, the campaign of uh, Chirac in 2002 was based on that. And that's how, that's why, that's what brought Le Pen to the second round, much to everyone's surprise, that limited Jospin. So this thing is there. And that's why 
what's happening at the moment is quite interesting. Uh, if, uh, if Macron was to win uh, the next election, he seems to be in a fairly good position, but it's not done. Huh? We'll have to wait 70 days uh, for the first round. Uh, then the right will have to ask the Republican could be in big problem and could explode. Because we can see at the moment within the Republican movement, you have two brands and one is quite tempted to ally with the far right, with people like Zemmour and Marine Le Pen. Up to now, there's been what they call a cordon sanitaire, a sanitary cord, a wall between the two. But now we think that this wall is becoming uh, uh, is, is becoming thinner and thinner, and that many people, and that's why the Zemmour project is there. Zemmour, in his meetings, doesn't talk about the election so much as the recomposition of the right. He wants to have a kind of shameless right, which includes people from his camp and from Marine Le Pen, and many people coming from uh, the right of the Republican Party. So that's what is at stake at the moment, the future of the right. And could we have a bigger... Uh, a fusion between many Republicans and the right, while the soft Republicans would probably be tempted to go more towards Macron. So it's the continuation of the, the kind of wrecking ball that uh, uh, Macron launched in 2017. He's already smashed the left, smashed the right in part, but it is a progress, it is a process which is uh, carrying on and which puts an end to what we've known in the Fifth Republic, uh, the left-right divide, right. which could now lead to more far-right, okay. centre-right, centre-left, on Let's get Peter's divide. take on this and specifically on uh, someone like Eric Zamour, who, uh, as you are very well aware, described by some as, as the Donald Trump of, of France. I mean, is it that his ideas appeal to a part of the electorate, Peter, or are people then fed up with the status quo? Well, I do think he's uh, innovative in the sense that he uh, he has a sort of different take uh, compared to Marine Le Pen. Uh, first of all, a very uh, important uh, thing about Zemmour is that he's an immigrant himself. Um, he's a Jewish immigrant from uh, Algeria uh, who is, you could say, perfectly assimilated uh, in France. And I think uh, this is important to understand his program because what he's really uh, keen for is to uh, tackle these kind of parallel societies that you have not only in France but in many uh, many European countries and I think that um, uh, that's a problem that many people from the left to the right recognize as as an issue now the solution uh, for that according to uh, Zemmour is let's say uh, the traditional approach of the French state which you could argue in, in some respects is quite um, authoritarian. I think it's too easy to brand it as, as fascist. Uh, it's, it's, not, uh, it's not a precise label. Um, I think he, he makes some, some good points also from a civil rights uh, perspective. He, for example, he wants to uh, strengthen the property rights of people that are the victim of, uh, of squatters. Uh, but indeed, in some respects, you could argue that um, uh, he goes too far. For example, he has proposed that He certainly that has made quite no radical longer... comments, Peter. Yes. So, for example, uh, an, an example that's often cited that is that he, he wants it to be illegal uh, to give your child a name that is not on an approved list, a first name. So he would allow people to keep their surname, to, refer, to, to be able to refer to their roots, uh, but to adopt, um, to force them to adopt a French name, a French first name, in order to stimulate assimilation. Now, I mean, I think you can put very big question marks um, uh, with that proposal, even if that was uh, already law in France before, until the early 90s, um, even. And in some other countries, you have similar uh, regulations. Um, so so I, that's, that's indeed, I think, uh, problematic. I think he has this typical uh, deep belief in the power of the state uh, to promote things like um, assimilation, which I think is a goal that many people uh, agree with, but that uh, it's perhaps naive to think that with the, the power of the state, you can achieve that. I mean, the reason for the lack of 
integration of, of migrants, not only in France, but in many European societies. I mean, this, go much, this goes much more deep than right. uh, simply the lack of, uh, of state action. Okay, uh, let's but, just but Zemmour put... is at least... Let uh, me yes. let me just bring in Nasita because uh, Nasira, excuse me, I, I did see you shaking your head as Peter was speaking. Go ahead. Yeah, yeah, I completely disapprove with everything that has been said, and actually, I think it's a very good example of how accommodating Zemmour into the field of politics is being done just before I spoke. I mean, saying that you know he's having this uh, quite acceptable proposals and that this is not fascism. Of course, it is, and fascism has been elected time and again, not only in the U.S. a few years ago, but also in Germany and elsewhere. So how can you say this is not fascism? And the fact that he would say that Muslims, it's not, not any random first names that are supposed to be banned from France, it's Muslim first names. So the fact that he he's not an immigrant, by the way, if I may just uh, suggest that, he was part of the repatriation of French Jews from Algeria at the end of the Algerian war for independence, an, in, an anti-colonial uh, war. So Eric Zemmour knows exactly what it means to have a Christian first name, because this was imposed on his community, the Jews, so that they can be assimilated to the anti-Semitic European frame. So, I mean, you know, this is quite strange that you would just say that he's having good ideas. But he's here's boring. the thing, Nasira. I mean, according, let me just put this he's to you. Bending. Excuse me, just let me finish, because these two men have spoken very long. Sure, if okay, I may say okay, so. go ahead, go ahead. So, 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 yes, please. So, what I want to say is that Zemmour is bending the reality to his own purpose and to his own goals. He's not trying to be constructive in any way in a society that is multicultural, which he refuses to admit, which is also very open to, the, to many different kind of religions and, and experiences and culture. And this is working much better than you would think. But There's allow no me for a moment, Nasira. Okay, we've heard you. Uh, allow me. Just allow me for a moment. Let races. me put this to you. I mean, let's just... Uh, if, if we just don't focus on Zemmour, but focus, in fact, on a lot of the candidates who have promised to take tough lines on immigration and security in France. This is according to an Ipsos poll. A majority of people say they don't feel at home like they used to, 62%. There are too many immigrants, 64% of people felt like, and there is a need for a strong leader to reestablish law and order in Asira. So this is the general uh, feeling amongst uh, some people who have been polled in France. Yes, that's interesting that they would want to, to appeal to a more ordered society. In the past years, most of the disorder that has happened during uh, the, the, the mandate and the term of uh, Emmanuel Macron were due to reforms that are neoliberal, such as the reforms for uh, uh, changes for retirement and the, the yellow vests. These are not immigrants that were on the street fighting for their rights. And this is where uh, the, the state has struck very hard on them in order to, to prevent them from expressing their rights. So if this is disorder, then it's disorder that is being brought by neoliberalism and not by immigration. Okay. So if they are against immigration, this is a general trend in Europe. It's not, it's not specific to French people. And this is something that is being opposed by all international uh, organizations, such as the, the, the United Nations, the European uh, uh, Tribunal for Rights. Everybody is asking why France is acting so harshly on immigrants. So now there's, there, we are at the crossroads in order to understand whether France becomes this more and more uh, racist and xenophobic society, which means exceptionism is about, or if we are to move to a more open society. Okay, Numbers and I'm glad you brought up Europe. When it comes to a new election. Thank you for bringing up Europe, because let me put that to Peter. Peter, if we look at the uh, possible scenarios going forward, and let's say, of course, um, uh, President Macron himself hasn't announced his official candidacy, but should he uh, win a second term? When it comes to France's relations with the EU, what will we see under a Macron presidency? More of the same? 
Uh, well, yeah. Um, so if Macron gets elected, uh, he's, of course, let's say the most uh, pro-European of all the candidates. Uh, I think he's going to try to consolidate some of the initiatives that have um, happened under his watch. Uh, for example, the EU recovery fund. Um, so more more uh, centralization of power. Maybe he's going to try to have a pan-European election uh, law uh, with uh, pan-European election lists. Um, if uh, Zemmour or Le Pen would be elected, then it would be different. But I think in both cases, they have already, at least in the case of Le Pen, uh, dramatically watered down. Uh, Le Pen used to be against the euro. She is no longer uh, de facto. Uh, Zemmour has also made clear, as far as I could figure out, because he, uh, he, it's still early days to know what he exact, exactly wants, uh, he, he has sort of pledged not to to deal too much with the EU. So so even with Zemmour, I think, um, yeah, he would definitely block uh, more centralization of power at the EU level. But I don't think he's going to focus all that much on the EU. He's going to focus uh, his efforts uh, and uh, policies uh, domestically on, on the issue of um, of integration of uh, of migrants, which is not which is his number one okay. uh, political uh, political issue. Jacques Roland, in your opinion, if uh, you look at an Eric Zemmour presidency, for example, I mean, just to add on what uh, to Peter was saying, he said that he will not advocate uh, for Frexit. He'll try to renegotiate the Schengen Agreement, but if necessary, he says he'll withdraw from the European Commission Convention. Excuse me on human rights. That's according to reports. I mean, is this something that's going to appeal to voters in no, France? No. Yeah, we are here, we are talking about fiction politics. Zemmour will not be the next president of France, nor will Marine Le Pen. That is a fact. I can tell you now that they have no chance whatsoever. The only one who has a chance of beating uh, Emmanuel Macron is Valérie Pécresse, okay? And Valérie Pécresse is doing a balancing act between Ciotti and appealing also, making a, a speech about immigration, Islam, insecurity. She's polling as high as Marine time, Le Pen right now. She's, very pro huh? she's polling as what? high as Marine Le Pen right now. Yeah, the big deal now. You know, for this election, what matters is who is going to come second after Macron. Macron will come first in the first round. Now, the game is about who comes second. Will it be Marine? Zemmour will not come second. I can tell you that. So now the game is between Marine Le Pen and Valérie Pécresse. Okay. It's in the interest of, Mal of uh, Valérie Pécresse that Zemmour polls as high as possible because it will take voters off Marine Le Pen, which is not actually quite the case at the moment. Marine Le Pen is fairly stable at about uh, 18 percent, 18 with Valérie Pécresse at 16 and a half. So OK, let me just bring in, in Nassira interest. for a final word because we've run out of time. Nassira, a final word to you. Are you optimistic about the future of, uh, of French politics? Uh, no, I'm not really <laughs> optimistic, especially if we, if we keep on uh, Accommodating the reality of uh, racism, leading the ideas and the and the agendas of uh, our politicians in France, I think we are in a very bad shape. And uh, probably for not only this election, but if it moves on to the far right and to the fascist ideas that can be accommodated, then it might be also be a very hard time in 2027. OK, I'll leave it there. Thank you so much uh, for joining us, Nasira Ganef, uh, Peter Klepe and Jacques Roland. We thank you for your time. Thank you for watching. You can see the program again anytime by visiting our website, aljazeera.com. For further discussion, you can go to our Facebook page. That's facebook.com forward slash AJ Insight Story. You can join the conversation on Twitter. Our handle is AJ Insight Story. For myself and the whole team here in Doha, thanks for watching and bye-bye for now.